Just let me ask you one question. Is Burr the solution to every NLP problem? Can you use Burr for everything? The answer is no, because it cannot do those text generation tasks. For example, it can not do machine translation nor summarization. Definitely you can argue there's a Burr to Burr framework, but I'm here uh, talking about Burr, just a simple pure Burr, plain Burr model. It couldn't. So that's why we need BART, which is a model that's kind of built for text generation task. And also you can use it for uh, text classification, token classification, that kind of things. So basically every kind of NLP tasks that you can think of, they you can use BART. BART is a model that is very similar to transformer. Basically it's a transformer architecture, encoder and decoder, and that's why it can be very easily to apply every kind, every kind of, uh, any kind of a text generation text, and it's very competitive. Its performance is close to uh, Roberta, uh in terms of uh, kind of a text gen classification, token classification, and question answering, and uh, you also can do something that Roberta couldn't do because Roberta is a bird-like model. So this BART, before we dive into BART, we uh, probably need to understand uh, what is uh, denoising autoencoder because BART is kind of uh, denoising autoencoders. So what does denoising autoencoders mean? Autoencoder is uh, basically you give the input, then the your model, your input is uh, x, y, x2, x3, xn, and your model need to predict the output. And the output should be exactly the same as your input. But the problem, one problem is uh, the, if you are a neural network model, you use a neural network model, which is powerful. And that's very easy to overfit. The model will just learn identical function, which is just learn, uh, generate the output, directly copy the input to the output. So that's why people add some noises to, to the input. Uh, for example, people will, uh, is, if you use a denoising autoencoder, then they will randomly mask uh, maybe fifty percent of your input to zero. Maybe x one will be zero, and x three will be zero. This is a very similar concept to a language mask language modeling. So you can say actually mask language modeling is kind of an auto uh, denoising auto encoders, uh, no matter Burr, uh, GPT two, GPT three, or Bart. So this kind of uh, <coughs> what we are doing like self supervised learning is basically we are using denoising or auto encoder. So this is Burr model. Burr model is uh, simply mask several tokens in the input, then the model need to predict uh, what are the mask tokens originally are. And for for the GPT GPT series, GPT family is like auto regressive decoder. So you get the input uh, from the previous the current context. For example, if you it's kind of uh, you can think it's like you read the text from left to right and uh, try to predict the next token, always predict the next token. So originally maybe you only have A, then the model needs to predict B, and then when you have A and B, model needs to predict C, and when you have A and B and C, and model needs to predict D. So it's kind of like that, and more importantly, uh, you can just think of it as a kind of a transformer architectures decoder, and the BERT is transformer architectures encoder, then BERT is like combined BERT and uh, GPT. So it's original transformer encoder decoder architecture. If you read the attention is all you need, paper, the original transformer proposal paper. Transformer was built for machine translation. So that's why a uh, bar is based on transform uh, uh, architecture. It's very good for text generation task uh, like machine tra translation. So this is a bar model. Bar model is uh, basically you give it uh, input text and it's bidirectional encoder. It's naturally bidirectional, so it reads two directions of text, and then the model try to try to predict uh, original input A B C D E. It's not only the mask tokens, also the original inputs A B E. It will also predict. So this is BAR model. If you're not really familiar with transformer architecture or BERT, no worry. I have two videos for you. 
I would really recommend you to watch Transformer Architecture Explained video. That's a very kind of a detailed walkthrough of Transform Architecture. And the Transformer is really, really the foundation of modern machine learning, deep learning, NLP. So uh, you really, really have to get familiar with that so that you can very easy to read a lot more papers more efficiently. Okay, so uh, that's the thing. And as for how bar, bar model was pre-trained, it's, uh, sorry, <laughs> how bar model was pre-trained is basically, it's very creative. The bar itself, the architecture is just a transformer. It's not really, it's nothing new. But the way they define a pre-training objective is so smart. So let's just see the first one. First one is just token masking. It's just nothing different from Burr. And just mask language modeling. You just randomly mask several tokens, 15% uh, 15 per 15 of tokens, let's say, and the model need to predict the rest. So the, the original input is A, B, C, D, E. Then the model also need to predict A, B, C, D, E. And they also have another one, which is uh, token deletion. Token deletion is they randomly delete certain tokens. The model uh, needs to predict oh, which tokens are deleted. But what's the difference between token masking and token deletion? Uh, is token masking you will put in the token masking uh, scenario you will put a mask token so model know which the position of tokens you can mask you know the second token and the <coughs> fourth tokens are masked but in the deletion model doesn't have any information of that so model need to uh, kind of learn of which direction which position of tokens got deleted so this is much harder task and also, he has sentence permutation. Basically, you can see A, B, C is a sentence, and D, E is another sentence. So just randomly permute these two sentences in this case. And the model need to know, oh, actually, uh, this D, E, D, E, this sentence is actually the second sentence. And A, B, C is actually the first sentence. Kind of you swap it, and model need needs to learn uh, these two sentences actually swap. Then need to predict the correct original uh, order of sentence. That's very difficult, very difficult. So it's a very smart way to do the uh, kind of a uh, pre-training. And if you think about it, in the bird architecture, you couldn't do this at all because bird is basically you put an input 10, 10 tokens, and model will predict the output for the 10 tokens. Just that the representation of tokens is kind of and the, and the input token is kind of a fix, is fixed. And in this way, in the bar model, is sequence to sequence model. So it has really, really unconstrained. It's really flexible in terms of input and output relation. So that's why in, if you swap the sentences, you can still predict the original sentence, sentences order. And also document rotation. The document rotation is, oh, original order is A, B, C, D, E. So you randomly select another start. So they say, oh, C, we, we want to use a C, this token as a start. So become C, D, E, A, B. The model needs to understand all oh, original orders are A, B, C, D, E. So you just think of, uh, maybe I give you a document. I have a pen and model. Uh, in, in the pre-training, you randomly rotate the document. So be become, I have a pen, a pen I have. The model need to predict the original, original sentence, I, I have a pen, original order. So it's very difficult for model to predict. So it's much harder pre-training objective than the token masking. And also uh, text filling. Uh, text filling is very similar to uh, token masking. The only difference is it's randomly uh, mask uh, zero to three tokens. And if you mask three tokens, they say it's just a certainly mask ABC and they will just be replace as a single mask tokens instead of three. In the mask language uh, modeling, it will be three mask tokens if you mask A, B, C, but in the text feeling, it will just be single mask tokens. So model needs to know, oh, I, you, you only give the hint one single mask token, but model, model needs to know, hey, there are actually three tokens got mask. So it's much harder than the token masking. So that's why bar model is very strong because the kind of uh, learn a lot of different um, relationship between words. And, or you can say it's training schema is much harder than mask language modeling. So it's very smart, very smart, very smart way to think about self-supervision. By the way, I make 
deep learning videos every week. If you would like to receive more content like this about deep learning, don't forget to subscribe. Your subscription is really the best encouragement for me to make more videos like this. Okay, so uh, we now we know now we know um, how bar was pre-trained. So basically, bar architecture is just transformer, and the pre-training objective they are six. So uh, you know you can you can implement that by yourself. HA. If you look at the bar, they actually didn't release the pre-training uh, scripts. So uh, now you know how to do that. And uh, here are some ablation study. They uh, do ablation, only do the token masking, only do the token deletion, text filling, document rotation, sentence shuffling. And you can, f as you can see, if you only do a document rotation, then its performance is quite bad. If you only do the sentence shuffling, its performance uh, is quite bad. This is very interesting. But if you only do like token masking, its performance is very similar to mask language, some other uh, way of doing uh, pre-training. And they, these five methods basically is they are mimicking previously state of the art mask token, mask language model, and mask sequence to sequence, that kind of thing. But what we actually uh, what we actually care about is this ablation study. So it tells us which way of uh, pre-training objective is more important. And in my opinion, uh, text filling is very important because you can see text filling achieve a lot of uh, best performing uh, results. For example, score 1.1 and uh, some other task, X sum is a summarization task, conversation AI, it kind of achieve much better results in token uh, masking. You can actually, th it's very, actually very reasonable because the text filling is, in my opinion, is much better uh, mask, a much better pre-training objective than mas mask token only. And uh, it's also very similar. Okay, so that's the thing. And if you do a text filling and the sentence shuffling all together, you get a very, very good results as well. So that's uh, kind of a, you can learn how 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 these things works, how they are related to each, related to each other. As for how you can use BART for text classification, it's very interesting. It's very similar to to BERT. If you remember BERT, BERT actually used classification token they put in the first as the first tokens, and you use the representation of that classification tokens feed that into a classifier. But for the BAR model, it's a Kind of auto regressive model, so you cannot just put a classification token in, in the first. You should use the last token. So they use the last token's representation as the representation for the whole uh, text sequence and feed that into a classifier. So that's how they do a text classification. What an example of text classification? For example, sentence sen uh, sentiment analysis. Is this sentiment is positive, or negative, or neutral? So. Uh, they say, I really like this pen. And in the bar, it will put it into the encoder and you will decode, I really like this pen as well. And they will put, get a representation of, I really like this pen, which pen is the last token. So they will get a representation of this and fit into the model. Or there will be a punctuation mark, the period, they will put it in, into the classification model. So this is a text classification. And uh, as for how they apply this bar model to, uh, token classification uh, task, for example, name entity recognition is very tricky. That's why you didn't see too many people using bar for that, uh, because it's not very intuitive. The, well, how they use is they use the decoder, the top re, top state, top hidden states of the decoder. They say, I have a pen. You put the input and output decoder, I have a pen as well. Then you got the, the top layer, the last layers, the representation, uh, hidden representation as the a representation of the given token, then put that into the classification layers. So basically, not very different from birth, but it's much less intuitive because you need to uh, translate from original sequence to another sequence and uh, get a representation of each token. Okay, so uh, here's a comparison between BART and the BERT and XLNet and Roberta, which is all our state of the art. Uh, at that time, at that time, uh, bar when bar original published, and they are still pretty much one of state of the arts in in, in even 2021. Um, the, you can see bar model is very competitive. It's 
basically very has a very similar performance to Robota, which is uh, usually we can refer to the one of the best language models. In this kind of a uh, task, they uh, most uh, bird-like model can do. But what what's uh, more amazing is the bar model can do a lot of different uh, tasks. They Robota, Bert, Excelnet couldn't. Uh, for example, like summarization task, uh, this is a CNN Daily Mail, uh, very famous uh, summarization data set. And BART is uh, achieved the state of the art at that time, at that time, when BART was, BART was published. It's kind of uh, achieved the state of the art in every single matrix. root 1, root 2, root longest comma uh, tokens, root L. And in the X sum, which is another summarization data set, you also achieve the state of the art result. This is what Bar was uh, so good. Um, well, actually, uh, when Bar was just for first published, I just think, oh, this is just another bird like model. I didn't really read it. Until I think recently, uh, I figure out a lot of uh, t text generation tasks, they are using Bart. Why? Because bar is just the best model, just the best model, and you kind of stand the test of time. You just over a year now. Right now, I think bar was published in twenty twenty, or t around sometime around twenty twenty. I think it's twenty twenty, <laughs> and still, uh, most people, most papers, new publication right now, they use bar as a base model. So bar is really, really a uh, very good model. I would really say so. That's why I'm kind of uh, reading, uh, reading in more uh, detail because if I you. I don't understand it very, very uh, fully. I couldn't really apply those principles to the problems uh, that I want to solve, right? And also, uh, bar, my bar paper also uh, right now have like 12, um, 1,200 citations. I think it's very important paper for a text generation task, uh, for example, summarization or abstractive question answering or just a common question answering. You can frame me as a uh, text text generation task. So that's part. What we learned today. Conclusion: Bar allows many different ways of uh, document corruption, which is uh, another way of saying pre-training, uh, self-supervision. It's really amazing because you couldn't do that with Bird or other Bird-like models, and it, is, it has very similar performance to Roberta, but it can do something Robert I couldn't, which is like text generation task, and he achieved state of the art uh, summarization tasks on every single matrix. If you read a lot of summarization uh, liter literature, you will still find m almost every summarization papers right now published in 2021, they are using bar model as a base model. All right, so that's the end of the video. If you would like to receive more deep learning things, deep learning videos like today, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and also like or share the video. They really help the YouTube algorithms. Other than that, I will see you next time.